Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast Show with Mike Midgley. Hey, and welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. And on today's episode, we're going to be discussing a key topic for many entrepreneurs who are really looking forward, uh, you know, and, and finding that way to break through. And especially when we're talking about an influencer. You know, ultimately, what we're going to be talking all about today is the power of direct response marketing, selling and packaging oneself. I believe that the need to stand out today is more than ever. In the arena, there is so much noise. You've got to provide value in advance to gain both, you know, a following that grows, that sticks around, and a community that obviously is going to spread and share and and, and really sort of get value from it. And to me, that's what all this is about. And if you can create that balance of getting people to stick around, promoting yourself, delivering more value than you're extracting, then ultimately, to me, that's Jenga. Um, The considerable noise and continuous regurgitation of the same old content, um, you know, just creates distrust. So if you're in that mold, stop what you're doing, go away, go and get some authenticity out there. Because trust me, authenticity is what what it's all about. Um, And you know what, I've never, ever really been a fan of fake it till you make it. I know there's always a little bit of that flamboyance around everybody out there who's trying to make a difference. Uh, But ultimately, authenticity is key and delivering your own experience expertise and value, like I said, deliver far more value in advance before you're looking to extract value and you're on a, a certainly a path to success. So certainly I'd be keen to hear your feedback uh, so you can leave us a message on our favorite channel of Twitter using the hashtag the open mic or leave us a comment below. And uh, you know, if you're a fake it till you make it type of guy or gal, then I'm happy to have that debate with you. And uh, that may not be kind because I'm an honest speaker and people who follow me, they know I say it as I say it, but I'll respect it anyway. And please lay that challenge down. Today, I'm exceptionally proud and privileged to uh, be joined on today's show by Heather Ann Avonwood. Heather is widely regarded as a top authority both on digital marketing, sales coaching, and online publishing on business strategies. Heather Ann has been named one of the top 50 must follow women entrepreneurs by Huffington Post, no less. And Heather Ann has also been named Chief Sexy Boss from her Amazon bestseller book, Sexy Boss and How Female Entrepreneurship is Changing the Rule Book uh, and Beating the Big Boys. Um, and sometimes we're calling the wizard behind the curtain as well. So. I've got to give you a little intro to Heather here. Heather, uh, in 2006, started and developed and grew an online information marketing business to over a million dollars in sales in less than 12 months. Now, for you guys out there thinking, yeah, that's easy. Trust me. You've got to think about that date time, 2006. Facebook weren't Facebook was still called the Facebook. Uh, Twitter would not even launch. So you've got to look at that and put that into context. That is an awesome result. Um, so welcome to the show, Heather. Um, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule at South and Southwest Conference this week. Uh, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me from all the way from Austin, Texas. Thank you for having me. And you're right. I never thought about that, but you're right. I did that um, online sales and there was no Twitter or Facebook. I, I think I, I forgot. You're right. I think, uh, when did Facebook launch? Oh, seven, oh, six or seven, I think somewhere, but it wasn't okay. big, right? So it launched, but it wasn't like around, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. People often forget that. And the thing, you I know, know. I go back to when I was working in the PLC in the, uh, as a CEO in a stock market business. Um, yeah. It was 2003, and we'd, we were a finance company doing wheeled asset finance, like leasing cars, leasing vans, leasing trucks. And uh, we had as our own online quote system. And people said, yeah, so what? I said, 2003, we got a room racked out with servers and air conditioning units with our own servers and all these HP things running these things. Yeah. And they were like bizarre. You know, it, then, then it was like 100K in hardware, and gosh knows how many. Yeah. Software. And, you know, today, so you, know, you can get rack space and things like that. But, uh, but ultimately, people often forget that, you know, the, the age of the internet and the age of how it's developed. And for you to do that, absolute congratulations around that. So, yeah. um, I mean, but tell us a little bit more about yourself, Heather. I mean, I'm looking at your media page. It's not the first time you've done one in, in uh, health and nutrition and dietary supplements. I think it was to one and a yeah. half million and things like that. So tell us a little bit about you and give us a bit of a backstory. We'd love to hear that. Hey. Yeah, thanks for having me. So first of all, thanks for having me and thanks for doing this. And you have this amazing set. I'm so honored to be even on this show because you have some amazing people. And that's just, I feel like when I'm interviewed, it's kind of a, for me to serve, right? So I'm, I'm in your home, right? I'm, I'm a sexist girl. So I'm a guest in your home. So I kind of want to share something. I don't usually get to, so I was telling you in the green room, I don't get to share a lot of my backstory a lot. Um, kind of one of those things about actors and actresses are like, well, you're successful. Like, yeah, well, it looks like I was an overnight success, but it's been 25 years in the making, you know, <laughs> like really you weren't there for my first commercial or something, you know? So 
it's um, needed to share because I think uh, you and I have been around, we were in business before this thing called Facebook and Twitter and Correct. really where, right? We, I, like we remember <laughs> and we're not old, right? By the way, we're not old. So uh, at least I don't think I am. Um, I'm barely 41. So it's just kind of crazy, but I want to share a little bit my very first sales job. So we're talking sales and, and, and marketing, right? And yep. my first funnel, my first, I didn't know what the hell a funnel was, by the way. <laughs> I just was trying to make more money with less work, right? That's, that was me. I was 23. I just, um, I just gotten grad. Well, I hadn't graduated yet. I just got kicked out of school for non-payment. <laughs> <laughs> I was waitressing. I'm really bad as a waitress. Very bad. I'm one of those people that walk up to the table and I'm like, y'all good? You good? You're good. And then someone's like, your table needs ketchup. I'm like, no, 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 no. I told them. I asked them. You know, I'm one of these like really, really bad uh, waiters. My point was, is like, I knew if I was going to break it in business, I had to learn sales. Yeah. I was listening to Zig Ziglar when I was 17. Oh, Zig, one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I think and grow rich when I was 18. And I knew that sales was the key. So here I am, I get this um, ad for a Southwestern Bell Wireless, which turned to Singular Wireless, which is now AT&T. Yeah. So it's the wireless business in 1997. Wow. That's the brick phones, by the way, if y'all remember people, no texting. Absolutely. So I walk into this interview and I'm cute and young and 23 and the guy's like, this is for a sales job. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, no, you're cute and pretty and you don't have a degree. So we'll put you in customer service at whatever, $8 an hour or whatever. And I said, no, no, I want sales. And he's like, blah, 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 you know? And so he did the typical corporate thing. Like I'll check with my boss tomorrow. You know, he moved it past because he didn't want to say no to me anymore. Mm -hmm. And so then I come into the next day or next week and I interview with this woman. It was very weird. She was a woman in Fort Worth, Texas, which is even weirder for a woman to be in tech. And she was the manager and she liked me. And she walked up to Mike, Mike, I remember Mike and said, Hey, hire her as outside sales. The worst thing can happen. She fails and we put her in customer service. And he was like, what? Now, what I didn't know until my very first day was my colleagues, my call, you know, my colleagues, so to speak, were all men. I was the only female. All the females were customer service support. Yeah, so it's very and, typical there that was trying to push you and push you down. Yeah, the they were pushing me out. How, and they were they, all how under, did they react? How did the other, you know, the male sort they, of they, they made a bet against me. Wow. They had a bet going on in the background, which I found out later. Like, how long is she going to last? And they helped me at no help, no help. Because their average age was 40 married kids. Yeah. And I'm like 23 yeah. and just got kicked out of college. Right. So, and I was cute. What I call cute. Pretty. I keep saying that because people put you in like a box with that. Yeah. Right. So I had a lot to prove, but I also had a lot of things against me. And this is what they gave me. They gave me uh, this really old uh, metal desk and they gave me business cards. that probably cost them $3, a big old stack. And they gave me my extension and then they gave me, um, a big, huge yellow pages. And they said, go, stop, your quota is X. Have fun. That was no it. Training. I got get- no, sales no, training. no, because then that means I would have to actually win. And they didn't want me to win. They were like, he, he, he shall last two months. Here. <laughs> so I had a lot to prove. I dialed that dollars. I would drive into business complexes, those big business like complexes, just a lot of businesses that I'd walk in. I'd see these big signs that say no solicitation. I just bypass those babies. <laughs> and I would just walk in. I'm like, hi, I'm here. I have a point with Gary. And they're like, um, Who's Gary? I'm like, oh, what's his name? I'm so sorry. What's the CTO's name? Oh, Lance. Oh, that, I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. Lance, I'm, I have an appointment with him. And then Lance is coming out like, I don't, but I looked cute, right? They're like, he's like, I don't remember a meeting with you, but come on back when you have, <laughs> right? So I'm like, hi, I'm with, you know, the wireless company. Yeah, all of your employees need a wireless phone. And they're like, well, we don't really think that wireless is a good thing, uh, you know? So I learned how to sell by basically walking in and just asking for the sale. Do you know what? It's one of the proudest, I mean, you, you quoted Zig Ziglar earlier, and I'm a big student of Zig's, uh, I've oh, been 20 years, and uh, he calls it the proudest profession. And I, I mean, it does. 
Yeah, and when we speak to Skip, he talks about professional salespeople. And often people look past that. You know, we have professional sports people. We have, you know, professional actors, professional musicians. But salespeople always don't put that together, do the professional sales. But it is. You've got to study it. You've got to work at it. You've got to practice at it. And you've got to craft that sort of position. And if that's something that worked for you, you know, it's very, you know, dare I say, ballsy and pushy and get out there. But you've got to get yourself out there and And, and offer value, haven't you? And no one told me. It wasn't like they sat me down. Like I did, I'm a hustler. Even in today's world, like I hustle. I'm a hustler. You figure it out. You know, you, you see the sign that says no solicitation here. You'll be put in jail. You walk past it. <laughs> right? You're like, ah, oh, yeah. Sorry, well, I didn't right. see it. I didn't see that. Yeah, you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing not to ask for permission. So long story short, I actually ended up in that company for four years in an outside sales business. That's a long time. Yes. I ended up moving from um, outside sales to corporate sales. Basically, that's a, that's a, you know, I got upgraded. Um, I uh, was outside some corporate sales. That's when I got a salary. <laughs> Before it was like, you eat ramen noodles or you eat a steak. We're not sure. So long story short, that was a really interesting part of my life. I was there when they moved to Singular Wireless and they had the big transition. I was there the first, I remember being in a meeting where we were with Nokia. If y'all remember, remember Nokia? And Nokia was there. We all had phones and they go, there's this thing called text messaging. All right, everyone go. And so I remember my, my associate Brad, he was super sweet to me. And I go, Brad, 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 I'm going to send you a text message. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> and I send him one. I'm like, did you get it? Did you get it? And he's like, ding. He's like, oh, let me, oh, I got, hold, let me, wait. you know, like we're doing this in the boardroom. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then we're like, well, how do we use like, what, what's the purpose? You know, so just to give you an idea of like how I feel like I'm, it, how long amazing. I've been around. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I remember when I got my, I had a cell phone in uh, 2000, no, sorry, 1994, when I had a modern apprenticeship working with BMW uh, motor cars. Uh, and I had a phone, but there's no SIM card in it. It was just the phone was part of that. And then I remember when it went digital and then we you could, whoa, you can take a SIM card in and out of that and change it. And that was like a major shift. I think it was 94, 95 or something right. like that. And you know, you, you, you speak to the kids in the office today. I, we, we spoke to Ellie, the intern earlier, who's going to come do some video later in a moment uh, and things like that. Uh, and they just don't get it because it's just always been there. But there's this right. And you have to like sort of trade that phone and get another one to get a different number. And it was bizarre. You know, it's just, it's, it's so just crazy. bizarre. I mean, I really learned a lot. So that's kind of how I got my skin teeth. Now here's where I got into entrepreneurship because I was taught at a very young age that you go work for a big company and whatnot, and you make the money, you make a little, and you're all happy. Like I didn't really, I saw myself as a corporate girl. I thought yeah. this is what you're supposed to do. And I'm going to rise the ranks. Look at me, you know, and this is where I got my, what I call, I've had many slaps in my life as I call it or punches yeah. where, you know, you get a reality check or all of a sudden your life changes. You're going on a trajectory. It's like, boom, you know, you're like, what happened? So this was my very kind of big first one, by the way, I did end up graduating college. I went to school at night. So I'm going uh, full, time, full time out in outside sales. And then at night and weekends, I was going to school and paying my way through. Brilliant. And that's, that's yeah. how I changed my life as well. I had some, a lot of similarities there because oh. I originally started in the, as a motor mechanic in blue collar uh, and then went into, got into white collar. And the reason I got my modern apprenticeship at BMW uh, is because I went back to school and I always have a, uh, you know, while everybody was doing donuts in the car park, burning the tires out, um, you know, and going crazy, hanging out yeah. of the front windows, yelling at people. Uh, I went back and did business studies, I did uh, business law uh, and I did uh, Spanish language. Uh, I started to get educated, um, you know, and then within a couple of years, your life turns around and, you know, you get that bit of a, a taste for it, don't you? And then you, you sort of taste that meat and you taste that thing, you want more, you want more, and then you go for it. And, you know, I, I think one of the things from my side, Heather, as well, is that I moved on at that point in my life as well. And I'd be keen to know about yourself because when I went back to school, a lot of my mates didn't do that. They continued being delinquents, dare I say, and, and just doing what they were doing. And then, you know, my friendship circle changed and I started surrounding myself with different yeah. type of people. And wow, if you know, listen, three or four months, it just changed. And then opportunities were there that maybe they were there before, but I just weren't seeing them. I'm be interested if you saw that, you know, when you went back to school, you started to study again, you, you know, you, how did, was that something similar that I you did? I think for or myself, I, had, I was in corporate America now. Yeah. So it even went to another level. And even in my, my college peers, I, they didn't understand I was in full time. I mean, I was full time. I was an executive pretty much. And then I was going to school at night. So I was, I was like beyond them, you know, but I will say my very first, this is a crazy story. My very first, um, 
online marketing course was in 1999. I'm not lying. I was in a marketing class, okay? And this woman who was a teacher picked like 10 of us, literally had a private conversation and said, hey, the university has approved me for this thing called an online marketing course. It's only one time. You know, we, I want to, I want to handpick you to come in. And of course, all of us, all we cared about was like, do we get credit? You know, <laughs> so, that's all we care about when you're like, do we get credit? So she's like, yeah, you get credit. And I'm not kidding. The very first day was like this. Okay. Um, this is online marketing. No one knows anything about this. I don't know anything about this. I'm doing this course to learn. Here's your assignment for the whole semester. You're going to build a business online. You're going to create a business plan and we have no books. You just, we're all going to figure it out. I was like, what the hell? You know? So I actually ended up creating a thing called bestfitcoach.com. Right. And I create an entire business plan. If you look at it now, the thing has like AOL and Yahoo display, you know, really? Yahoo little ads. Like it's, I had to learn what SEO was and media buying. And back then it wasn't email marketing yet and no. chat and all these. Oh my God. Anyway, go on and on. But I remember, you know, giving it to her and I'm thinking to myself, what is this? But talk about a trajectory for life. So here's where the trajectory really changed. So I got what I call number one in the country in my company. So here in my company, I'm like, you know, no one believed in me. Now I'm doing well. I got promoted. Then my last year there in 2000, I think it was my last year. I actually ended up being number one in the country in wow. sales. Wow. Not my, you know, just my little Fort Worth, Texas, not just Texas, not not just the region, like the country. So I'm beating people in Chicago, New York, LA. That's amazing. Right? And then this was my first hit. I, I got what I call the pat on the head. You know what I mean? That one, the corporate pat on the head. And I was hoping for like a big old Rolex or like some like really big <laughs> Cadillac, which I didn't get. I was like, where's my Rolex? Anyway, um, they were like, congratulations, go back to work. And oh. then they fired me. My, my, uh, boss at the time quote said, I didn't think she didn't think I deserved it. Now there's no deserving with sales. You either have it or you don't. Yeah. You got the result, the results are on the board. Right. Yeah. And so she fired me because I didn't fit. I was not fitting into the world, but here's what I did. This was the thing. First thing I did. I want you to get this. I'm going to school at night and weekends. I'm like studying. It's my senior year in college. Cause I literally graduated that same year. So I'm like my senior year, long story short, I created my first funnel. So I went, I, I moved myself into this back of this, again, to the corner and I had the fax machine. <laughs> this is no lie. It's a true story. And I just got in a corporate account called Lockheed Martin. You probably heard of that huge yep. company, but it, when I got it, it was, um, it was what I called, they called a debt account yep. you know, here. We'll give it to Heather. Cause you know, so they give it to me It's a debt account. And I, and you can't penetrate Lockheed Mark because it's all shut down because of government, but yep. I'm allowed into certain areas. Yep. So I created this true story. I created a, a one sheet, you know, basically eight by 10. It's, you know, like black and white offer. Yeah. I yeah. walked into the Lockheed Mark. You got to go through all these military yeah. things. I walk in with this big stack because there's 6,000 employees, right? Yep. And six, and I hand it to this lady. I said, will you please um, distribute these in the lunch area. I mean, whatever. And, and I had a little form and they can either, e they had email, Lockheed Martin email. Yeah. You can email me or just fax me the fax order with your up. credit card and I'll, I'll, I will deliver it to your office. Lockheed. Yeah. I'd wake up in the morning, come to the office and I had a stack. Oh, and so all I did was fulfill orders all day. And everyone's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I just had them fax in the order <laughs> awesome. and it's my first funnel, right? It was like brilliant. And then they fired me because they said I wasn't doing enough work. Cause then I was coming at 10, I leave by two and then I'm, I'm I would go home it. and I would right. And they're like, well, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not the point. Like, right. <laughs> it's not the work. So, it's the result, isn't it? At the end of the day? It's the result. So my point, my very first funnel was in, in the year 2000. Amazing. On a fax as well. Like, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, here's, here's a quick story. I just got to share this really quick story yeah. for the listeners as well. So for the ones who are too young to remember what a fax was, uh, in the I later do. days, the faxes, it became in, as Heather said, like an eight by 10, like an A4 equivalent piece of paper, plain sheet. But before that, in the wheeled asset finance, going back in the mid nineties, when we were in wheeled asset finance, we used to fax proposals to people and it was like a thermal piece of paper. 
we did the thermal piece of paper uh, and then we got audited about three or four years later and we went to the files to open the files and it had all faded down so they couldn't audit anything. <laughs> so it was absolutely bizarre that, you know, we just physically couldn't do anything. So the auditor said, well, well did the customer sign that? I said, yeah, 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 we signed it. Well, where is it? It had all faded down. And it all faded, how, right, how right. How bad on the thermal paper and, and, and there was no audit. And literally we went through like hundreds of deals that we'd done and we was audited by the government, like the, what is now the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. Uh, we couldn't prove that these customers had signed for anything and uh, all the fax paper had faded down so what we had to do then new policy we had to take when the fax originally came through we had to photocopy it and then put it as a photocopy on a piece of paper just so it wouldn't fade but you know for you for those probably under the age of 25 or something that probably you don't know what you're talking yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but yeah. I'm not crazy that's absolutely a true story that so uh, how we avoided a major fine with the regulatory authorities by having all our audits blown out of the water because all the fax paper had faded. Right. right. Yeah. So <laughs> you get it, right? There's my first funnel was on a fax. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So anyway, that's how I got into the business. So then I got fired and uh, then I graduated college. And then this is where I got into entrepreneurship. It's a really important piece of my story. Um, so I, at the end of that, it was the summer. I saved a little money and all my friends were like, we'll just go get another job. And I'm like, no, I'm not building, because like you build a book of business yeah. and I'm not building another business again and have someone take it away from me. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I, then I found an infomercial one day and I'm sitting, it's a true story. I'm sitting on my friend's couch. She's moving the channel, found an infomercial. The guy's like, do you want to make you more money and control your life? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah that, was, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So I go to the thing at seminar at one o'clock and I sit in the seat and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, you can buy and sell real estate. You can make all this money and just give us $3,000 and we'll teach you everything we know. And I'm like, yeah, right. But I don't have $3,000. So, um, <laughs> but they got, then they said the magic words, this is such a magic words, which I love. They said for, for, for your spouse, it's a thousand. So I was like, sweet. So I nudged this stranger next to me and I'm like, Hey, can I be your spouse? And he's like, what's your name? I'm like, Heather. And his name was Bob or George. And I said, let's go to the back of the room. So I give him different credit card, different last name, no ring. I mean, it was obvious. I was lying my butt off. And they, they just wanted the sale from the Yeah. Store. They, oh yeah. They're like, we'll take your money. So they take the money. But the people who are running the event were like, what's your deal? You're different. You're a hustler. We saw that, you know, and ended up working for that company and wow. moved to Florida and ended up working for the largest seminar company in the country at the time with Robert Man. Allen, Robert Allen Institute, yep. Forex Made Easy, Wise Trade. And I started traveling the country and that's how I got into direct response. Brilliant. Fabulous. Crazy. Yeah, crazy story. So tell us some about more about these businesses. Obviously, the one I referenced earlier, twelve yeah. uh, sorry, a million in sales in less than 12 months, but there's a couple yeah. of other stories and success stories around that as well, isn't it? So just to expand a little bit about that, what was your approach? You know, what, was it a hook? Was it just a punt? Was it, you know, how many times did you fail before you made it? And I know obviously we've had some success and oh, yeah. failures there. But just talk a little bit around that as well, especially around the business growth stuff. So a couple things I'm very, very good. My superpower is taking something that not, is not selling and, and re-messaging it to the right yep. market with the right media. Yep. So I'm very good at aligning the message market media. Yep. So all the different, even down to like my fax machine thing, right, <laughs> is I figured out the message market to media. The media happened to be fax and then yep. the message and the right people in the market, right? So I started my first business online that really went from zero to a million dollars with a guy who was a dud. Like, I mean, you know, he was not a good speaker. I didn't have a lot to work with and I had to repackage him in the marketplace. And at the time it was like, right. The timing of 2006, seven, and they were redoing their bankruptcy laws. So we kind of leveraged the current marketplace of yep. what was happening. And I repositioned him as like the bankruptcy dude, you know, so teaching people how to, you know, avoid that piece. And that was right on 06, 07, which ended up 08 was a huge catastrophe here in Absolutely. America. Yeah. So same here. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, yeah, you were too. So the packaging kind of happened at that piece. He was like, why well, would, you know, I'm really good at repackaging. And then the next one was in oh, uh, 2015, which is recent. I had a, a significant other at the time, literally had this piece of metal in his closet pretty much. And he was like, Oh, by the way, you know, this thing and I've tried to sell it and no one wants to buy it. I'm like, okay, what, what do you got? You know? So, um, it's just basically you lay down and you lose 10 to 10 to 15 inches in 30 minutes. Wow. 
And I was like, you can't sell this. Give me a break. So I'm like, every woman wants this. Right. And so I renamed it. I repackaged it. I made it very female based. I put it in a beautiful room and made it very nice and very spa like and repackaged it, renamed it, said what it did. Um, and we literally, there was a point when we first started, we were so backed up in appointments. When people would call, I would say the first appointments in three and a half months. Oh, that's amazing. It was, it was amazing. amazing result, but wow. So, and that was again, right message to right market female via the right media. We actually use Groupon. And so, and I reverse the engineer because a lot of these companies that have something similar like Zorona and things like that, they truly charge high, like yes. three grand. Yep. I, I literally cut the price in a third and the yep. price was like $300. And at first, yep. like, why would you do that? I'm like, because that's just the begin. That's the, what I call shiny object. Yes. Yeah, early adopter that's stuff. Yeah. And it comes from my seminar days of traveling the country. It's like you freebie to low to high. You want to have them come in the door so you can have a conversation. What other, they obviously want to lose weight. What yep. other things can you sell, lose weight? You can sell them packages and supplements and, and this and that. That's where the money is, you know? Yeah, so we went from zero to 1.5 million in sales on a supplement company. Is a supplement company. I mean, he was trying to sell this amazing machine. I'm like, forget the machine. That's, that's the shiny object. Forget, it's the end result, isn't it, what people the are The end result is we get them on a recurring supplementation program and like all that. So, and I'm no, and that, no, this is no longer part of it, it's still very successful today, it's still around. We, we The business partner and I broke up. So, <laughs> there it is. don't have business with your spouse, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, so, the point is, is that, that's why I did again, I repackaged and did the message differently to the right market? In the yeah, market. absolutely. And, and you know, there's a thing that I always use when I work with our clients. And uh, I always talk about, you mentioned earlier about the Rolex watch in the corporate environment. And, yes. um, and I always say, if I bring you a Rolex watch in a plastic bag, what do you think? Uh, people think it's a fake, don't they? Uh, you know, and then if I bring yeah. you a fake in a wooden box with a piece of paper rolled up with a little ribbon wrapped around it and a combination lock on, you think it's real. It's that perception of packaging and it's so, so, so important. So if you're out there as a business trying to get leverage with your product, you know, get some traction with it, you know, have a look how it's packaged. You know, I'm not saying everybody's an Apple person or, or, or whatever, but, you know, we use a, a product over here called Moo, M-O-O for business cards. And, you know, the 600 gram business cards, they come in awesome packaging. The Mevo cameras, if you ever, you know, if there's any I people, have that. Any, yeah, it's great yeah, packaging. The, the amazing packaging. And to be fair, the Mevo was, an, uh, no disrespect, but it was an absolute pile of crock for the first seven months until it all got all the upgrades in it. It kept failing. It wouldn't connect. There was mutiny out there. But ultimately, the packaging, you're stuck with it. You're stuck with it. Um, you know, we weren't using the packaging. We were using the camera. But what I'm trying to say is that package your goods right. If you're unsure about how to do that, and you want some tips and tricks, just send us a message using on Twitter using the hashtag the open mic. We'll get those answered or we'll send them over to Heather and she can get you some answer for you as well. And we'll take a look at that. So think about your packaging. You know, you've got to obviously de deliver value. You can't put fake Rolexes in wooden boxes and expect to sell them as real. I'm not condoning that at all or piracy. I just want to be clear on that. But what I do want to say is packaging is key and think about the end result. I want to share, this is a very, very good time to share this story that yeah. just happened last week. I was at an official South by Southwest party um, and the, the, um, it was co-created, co-sponsored by this company called Moon, Moonlight. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Moon, no, Moon Selfie. Oh my God, they're going to kill me. <laughs> so I met the owners and they gave me this beautiful package. And so I literally did an entire video at IGTV and I'm in Heather Havenwood yep. and my IGTV. See the video. I'm sitting outside. You'll see it. And I did this entire opening of the package. The packaging, guys, is off the chain. It's their very first product. And amazing. the guy said to me, because we created the packaging so that it looks amazing in the Apple store. They designed it to sell to Apple, period. Amazing. This thing is gorgeous. It's white and thick and opens. It slides open. This thing opens up. And it's like, oh my gosh. I was like, ah, it was gorgeous. The, the branding was amazing. It's their very first product out. There are two entrepreneurs. One guy's a Chinese guy from Harvard. And the other guy's an African-American man. Talk about really amazing story. And I love them. They're so sweet. I'm, they're on my Instagram. But I did a whole video opening the package. And it was just this momentum experience. And that alone, I was like, this thing is worth $100. You Absolutely. Know? That perception was, straight in, isn't it? And they literally create the package so that when they go to Apple and go, we want this in our, your stores, yeah, they're like, 
It's a no brainer. It looks, it would look beautiful on their wall, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really, and they designed it all for really the Apple piece, not really the, and the um, Android. They just, because they know what they want. So, <laughs> well, that's fantastic, Heather. I really appreciate you sharing the stories. And, you know, look, take inspiration from Heather. You can, if you want to connect with Heather, you can do um, on LinkedIn. If you go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash LinkedIn. Um, or you want to follow Heather on Instagram, that's just Heather Havenwood, H-E-A-T-H-E-R, H-A-V-E-N-W-O-O-D. Um, and what we will do, we will put all these in the show notes be uh, below uh, with links to Heather's website, uh, Instagram, and uh, other social channels as well. Um, you can also check out uh, Heather's um, uh, book on Amazon as well. Um, so if you want to have a search there, it's how female entrepreneurs are changing the rule book for money, success, and even sex, and how you come to. Um, that's on Amazon. And you can check that out there. Here in the UK, it's on audio book as well for those who prefer the audio listening. Um, so again, just search that on uh, Amazon. So that's brilliant. And, and again, thanks for coming on to the show, Heather. I really appreciate it. And it must be such a challenge because, again, we talked about the dating earlier. Uh, yeah. of the late 90s early 2000s um you know being that female sort of you know not you know uh, uh, not aggressive but you know wanting to, to grow and be successful and being held back in corporate america um yeah. you know how, you know it, it must have been a difficult point and uh, i think like you said earlier a lot of people just think that hey you're successful today and it's always been that way but it certainly hasn't and you know the, the, the ups and downs and you know people who know me and listen to my show and listen to my content um, you know, we, we lost a 12 million pound business in, in the Great Recession of 2012. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that takes some coming back from me. You know, you hit the heart, you ground hard. And, you know, you know yeah, you, you can float businesses. You can have six or seven figure exits. You can raise VC. You can franchise your business. Mm -hmm. All the but things. coming coming from yeah. the real test is coming from nothing. After my last business in 06, you know, I actually lost it and yeah. in 07, 08, and then I lost my house. Then I ended up living in my car. Yeah. And I lived it and uh, thank God I had some cool friends with some cool couches. You know, so I mean, honestly, and it's just me and my dog. And when you get to that point where you're like, it's just me and my dog, or you know, you and your car and your dog, you have to really dig deep right? Yeah. Like, what am I doing? You know, and it was 08. So there was a piece where the, the country was going through it, but mine wasn't due to that. At first it got yeah. triggered by some of the things. It was actually a bad business partner and then a bad timing. Yeah. So then I lost my house and everything else. So bankruptcy, foreclosure, you know, thank God my car was paid off. So I had my dog in my car <laughs> <laughs> and everything that I could, you know, sold everything and then put like a little bit in storage. Um, and so you, yeah, I think honestly, when I hear people like, Oh, success, success, success. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the failure. I want to see how you are yeah. when you like hit the dirt, you know, yeah, that's when absolutely. the athletes really, an at, and a true athlete is when you see an athlete in pain or in their hurting, or you see them actually eating dirt. How do they react to the, that? Yeah. And you know, do, you know, do you know what, Heather? I learned more out of losing that 12 million pound business. So uh, let's just, uh, let's just uh, adjust that for the American audience. Uh, it's about 1.6, uh, sorry, uh, $16 million business. So we'd lost that. Wow. Um, and I learned, I learned more out of losing that business than I ever did out of two six figure and a seven figure exit in the previous business. I was successful. In. Yeah. Because and, those are wins and those are fun. And that was a cool yeah. experience. But when you like see a, you know, whatever is a financial sheet and you're seeing a negative of 12. <laughs> There's something that like your body's yeah. like, I don't even, you know, want to get up tomorrow. I That's mean, it. There's times when you go to bed and you think, God, I hope I don't wake up tomorrow morning, but you do. And right. then you, right, I'm, I'm done feeling sorry for myself. I'm going to get yeah. up there. I'm going to do it again. And, uh, you know, I think that's what you got to do. And again, um, with the, uh, a podcast we just did recently as well with George Hodgson from Mason the Shoe. He's a big mental health campaigner. Um, so go check that out as well. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're struggling in that sort of area or shoot us a message, I'll get you connected with George um, and the great charities that he works with. If you, if you are down and you know, you're looking about finding that inspiration, follow Heather's stuff online and all the social channels Thank you. As I yeah. say, very it, positive people it's a very important piece that it's how you handle um it's just it's how you handle devastation it's how yeah. you handle ups and downs and you know i see that a lot with the younger people today they just they've never experienced it yeah. and it's like i hope they don't i i do but it it does cause you to it you know it's the calluses right it's the calluses on the hands kind of yeah. thing and as an athlete and whatnot, it's like, I've got a lot of calluses all over my body from, <laughs> you know, 
spiritually, financially, uh, mentally, and spiritually and emotionally that you've had to, you've had to learn to dig deep. And I will say that one thing I learned, the big thing I learned when I was sitting there on my friend's couch, thank God in 2008, nine, I'm sitting there on the beach. Thank God he lived on the beach. That was kind of cool. Um, so I was sitting on the beach and I thought to myself, you know, God, why is this, ha- like, you know, why is this happening? All that stuff goes on in your head. And I, I really got that who I am as an entrepreneur. Like I'm sitting there on the beach technically have nothing, no credit, no this, no that. And I, and the, what universe came to me is like who you are as an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if you have a business or not. You don't have to have a business to be an entrepreneur. Let's yep. take another example. Athlete. Yeah. A true athlete doesn't have to be in the game to know who he is or she is, is an athlete period. Yep. Absolutely. And when you get that core level, then you're not attached to each business. Correct. Right. So, and if you don't want me to go for just one more second on this. So I always think when people look at Facebook, I mean, you know, we all love Zuck, right? Or whatever. But at the same time, it's not realistic. People look at his success story and how he went from Harvard to Facebook for God's sake. And they go, Oh, I should be like that. I'm like, no, I'd rather you look at like Steve jobs and all the yeah. crap that he went through yeah, and all the stuff that he from Apple. Yeah. I mean, he went through a lot, you know, and I think you need to look at who your mentors are. If you look at Zuckerberg, that's not realistic. No, that's a, that's a lucky charm thing going on. You know what I mean? It's not in reality and it's hard to do business in today's marketplace. There's a lot to deal with. And so I think that the people don't have the resiliency because they just say, well, it should be easy. Look at Zuck. I'm like, well, you know, (laughs) Zuck is Zuck. Absolutely. I think from the other side as well, and it's a similar side of topic, Heather, these, Heather and that is that um, I always have a policy that I never go in to get involved with a business if I don't know where I'm going to exit it. So I have the exit right in mind, right up front. And, you know, I know a lot of people will challenge me on that. But for me, you know, I'm involved with probably four or five businesses now as either non-exec, investor, uh, we our own businesses that we're actually trading out and, and serving. Um, and I never get involved with a business, uh, certainly from an ownership or an equity side, if I don't know when I'm going to exit it. And that's right out of the gate, whether that's a three-year or a five-year plan. Now, it doesn't always go to plan. You can bounce past that, get a little bit lucky and get out a bit earlier. But I'm a big believer that challenging yourself. And I think that's what you said about Mark Zuckerberg and the Facebook thing. Right. But, you know, it's staying around for that long. And, you know, sometimes you can get stale, maybe as an exception, you know, the success is, is self Called, you know, how to get divorced correctly with this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to write the prenup, baby. I mean, you got to write the prenup. Everyone's like, oh, it looks great. But like how, where's the, pre-? I've learned that. Someone keep asking me, someone asked me a long time ago, what's your number one thing you've learned and all the, the challenges you've yeah. had. I'm like, how to find good lawyers. <laughs> they're like, how, right. how could you say that? I'm like, honestly, my biggest mistakes I've made has never been the business itself or the message to market or the media or the marketing. I'm very good. The things I failed at, and I've had the hard reality of the swallow. If it, yeah. I didn't, I wasn't lawyered up properly and have the right contracts. I didn't have the right exits. I didn't have the prenups. I didn't have, cause I was all on like, oh, this is exciting and trusting. And yes, of course I trust you. I love you. You're amazing. You're my, you're my bestie. We're business partners. You know, it's like, I'm like, I'm like just recently I had a business deal that kind of started amazing. And I, within the first conversation, I said, I'm bringing in my lawyer. This is exciting. They're like, what? I'm like, oh, I, I don't handshake anything anymore without yeah. lawyers. No, right? And you're very like, yeah. for, as a woman, they're like, what? When you're trusted, like this ain't about trust, baby. This is about, we're about to go in business with money. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, welcome to the world, man. If you don't want to do that, that's cool. But this is my, and the next meeting was my lawyer's on. And she, he's yeah, ready to ask. You've got to do that. You've got to do that because ultimately, you know, it's, it's a transaction. It's a relationship. And yeah. ultimately, all parties are responsible to deliver. And, you know, to me, it's a little bit like when we work with our clients. We will say to them, look, you know, not as blunt as this, but hey, we're going to make money out of you. Here's the terms around that. But here's the value we've got to deliver as well. So now that's out of the way. Let's just get down and get on with it. But people who want to, you know, resist against you that. When I get excited, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've had red two. flags, yeah situations i literally my second meeting like okay let's bring my business advisor in who happens to be my lawyer and they're all all of them are very (laughs) what and i'm like guys we're talking money and i'm not gonna go into this blind i'm not stupid i'm not i mean i know what i bring to the table i know you bring the table let's get it on the books right and both deals by the way have fallen apart yeah and i'm telling you that out of like escape yeah, it's like, oh, they, it's, it gets too much for people or like, oh, this is getting real or, oh, now if we look at the lawyer side, oh, I don't want that. And it's like, 
you got to learn how to get, don't fall in love, yep. how to get into contract and get that prenup right then. Right. Absolutely. So I, I'm a big believer in that for sure. Great advice. Take. Yeah. Great advice. So thanks Heather. And I really appreciate the intro so far. Um, yeah. Your backstory is amazing. And, you know, congratulations for bouncing out of it. Um, you know, we hear some all sorts of entrepreneurial stories on the open mic show. Um, and, and that's right up there with them. So thanks for sharing it. And as again, if you're interested in following Heather, you can follow Heather Ann Avonwood uh, on social um, at Heather Avonwood on Instagram is the favorite one, or just go to um, Heather Avonwood.com. You can check out all the social links on there as well. Thank you. So um, we're getting into the, the topic a little bit more yeah. today, um, Heather. So on the subject of selling, we talked about that and we, we heard, learned a lot about your journey. You know, leveraging podcasting, you know, to sell like a boss, how easy uh, is that easily? You know, um, you know, how do you become a sexy boss? Talk to me around that really. And, uh, you know, let's get on to the subject. Yeah, Obviously, well, podcasting well. is something close to my own heart. I know you've got a really successful podcasting channel yourself as well. Um, so just talk to us about that um, selling and leveraging podcast uh, uh, topic. Yeah, so podcast is, is podcast is really hot right now, and it's going to get hotter. Yep. Pandora just got in the game. Spotify just bought Gimlet for two hundred million dollars. I mean, this is a no kidding business. For a long time, it was like, oh, it's a Gimlet podcast. It's like, no, this is like real jet. I'm um, listening to I listen to Alexa in the morning or her news <laughs> briefings. I can't say her name very loud because she starts talking, um, and she does news briefings for me, right? And lately, I've been getting just the last two weeks, I've been getting um, advertisings of podcasts. I'm listening to the Wall Street Journal news briefing. Yep why I think podcast is really important today yep. is because it's a platform. It's a platform to influence and influence is where things are headed. People don't want experts. They want influencers. They want conversations with people that are real and they want to be intimate. And we, as human beings, we connect through voice. So you can send me an email all day long and I could take it really negatively. You can send me that email. I'm like, Oh, how dare you be mean to me? You know? And you're like, I didn't mean that. And then like you and I get on a phone call or a Skype call or a zoom call or whatever. And it, all of a sudden you're like, no, I, what I said is here. I can hear your know, tonality and I can hear your love. And I'm like, Oh, yep. well, I really took it this way. And you're like, no, no, because text and, and things like that aren't how we connect as human beings. And it's here's true. the bottom line, the Bible, right? The Bible 101, the, the most read book in the world, like it or not, agree or not, doesn't matter. You can open the book and you can read a story and you can understand it as a human being because we as human beings haven't changed that much. Technology is altered. We didn't have Facebook in 2002, <laughs> right? But, you know, biblical times, we human beings, we haven't altered. We haven't changed. We're still the same. So we have to understand that we're still in the H to H business, human to human, yep. Heather Havenwood, H to H business. We are not in the um, iPad to iPhone business. Yeah, okay? that's a good point. We are in the human business still. I mean, even though I'm looking at you through a camera lens, like I can feel you, I can connect you, I can. It's that energy, you. isn't it? And that reaction yeah. and that emotion coming through. Yeah. And that's really a critical piece. And so I think people are learning that podcast is such an easier way. And the reason why podcast is so hot versus YouTube, because I get this conversation a lot. People are like, well, I don't want to start a YouTube because I was at a YouTube channel. I'm like, I tell people you start with podcasts. Yeah. Podcast is the, the beautiful piece of the elixir because not everyone's sitting on 4G people. Not everyone's sitting. I mean, I'm right. half the time in my home I am. And then I move out of my home and I'm like, oh, I got bad self resorbers, but I can download an audio. I can download that and I can be on the treadmill. I could be on a walk, right? Yeah. I can listen. I can do those things in the car, stuff like that. So I think that the power of audio, there's a reason why Sirius XM just did a deal with Netflix in the summer of 2018. Why? Because Netflix is the largest video distribution channel in the world and yep. Sirius is the largest audio distribution, paid, paid audio distribution in the world. Why would they do business together? <laughs> think about it. You know why? Because Netflix is going to be doing, going to be sending them content. Because yep. Netflix knows that there's a whole world called audio that they can't tap into. Yes, absolutely. And so Netflix is like, how do we get our content out there in more hands? So, yeah. right? So now they're literally creating content just for Sirius XM or taking current content. Like comedy is easy, right? So they have all these comedy specials on Netflix. Easy one. They're creating a comedy channel of Netflix comedy and all the comedy people that they've been doing for years and years and years and they're just spreading it through, right? That's the first piece. So, I mean, my point, my point is that audio is not going away. And we've got a big video screen here too, but you guys are going to put it on podcasts and things like that. So yeah, well, I mean, we'll put it on podcasts. It goes out on podcasts, all the usual channels, Apple, Google, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the key thing is 
that, you know, people do learn differently, whether that's video or whatever it would be, but you're so right. The convenience of being able to either listen to it in the car while you're out on your jog in the gym, you know, doing whatever you've got. And, you know, people like the stories, people like that interaction between themselves, don't they? And it's a big part that's missing. And, you know, yeah. for us, podcasting is, uh, we started slow and then we build up, but I think for us, it's, it's very about qualitative approach and understanding our audience, understanding the type of guests that, that, that they're interested in to learn. Um, but, you know, it's certainly a commitment and, and we certainly love it. And I know obviously you're you know, crushing it on your side from there, but uh, absolutely. Um, from a podcasting point of view, talk to me as well. You know, how do you use podcasting to be an influence in the field? Um, okay. you know, yeah, influencer- so I've created something called the Influencer Growth Formula. And then yeah. go to influencergrowthformula.com if you want to check it out. But inside the Influencer Growth Formula, there's three pieces of that. Okay, there's the message, the market, the media, right? So the message, what actually is your message on the what I call top, top, top level? Because podcasting is yeah. top level. And then what is actually your market? And you got to go broad when you go to any kind of show or channel. And then that third piece is the media, the distribution side. Of course. I always set, tell people that in the world of influence, if you're creating an influence platform, which is what I teach people is like, how do you do two hours a month, two hours a month, create four shows and literally have the conversation of being omnipresent everywhere. That's why I teach in the formula process. That's okay. Amazing. It's a process. Now the, the thing about that's key is this is, this is my little standard, like it or not, but content's king, right? Engagement is queen. And in my world, queens over king, by the way, because <laughs> <laughs> it's my world. And then above that, king, the kingdom, the kingdom is distribution. Yeah, of course. Right? And the, the power of distribution is so powerful right now. And so when I take two hours a month, four shows, okay, in a month, I have it everywhere. I do not judge where people consume. No. So some people are like, oh, I want to create a YouTube channel. I'm like, why? Why judge others? I don't judge with, if they want to be on Reddit and consume me, cool. Twitch, cool. They want to be on Dash, there's other coming Dash, there's Twitter, there's YouTube, there's Facebook, on and on. I, I'm not going to judge you on where you consume me. Yep. So why are you judging people? Why are you forcing people to go to YouTube? Some people like YouTube. Yeah. yeah. They don't like, fine. Reddit, Twitch, and everything wherever else. You, wherever you are. Spotify, Pandora iHeart, Roku, like wherever you want, baby. Like, you know, so that's how I look at it is that it's all about moving the free line and distribution channel. So the kingdom, the kingdom is distribution. Yeah. And, but you can't, you, so you can't have any of those. You can't have the king, you can't have the queen or the distribution until you have content. Correct. So how do you get content out there easily, effortlessly and fun? And that is podcasting, guesting, saying, talking about yourself, talking to yourself, whatever you want to do. But as long as you're getting content out there at a level that people can actually understand, that's the key. No, that's brilliant. And I think that, you know, one thing you mentioned there about the distribution side is one of our arms is we work in the venture capital intermediary market where we oh, place okay. high, high growth businesses with, with venture capitalists. Um, you know, yeah, sure. The VCs they're looking for is the business model sound, is the market sound, is the management team aligned and on the same page, is the product cycle there, you know, all those, you know, is the numbers, of course, right. But also if you can't get your message to market and you can't get that, you know, uh, you know, you could have the number one cure for the, the you know, worst disease in the world. But if you can't get that out there to tell anybody, it's worthless. And, you know, the government is so on top of that. So that's a great piece of advice, Heather. And thank you very much for that. So we talked then about the distribution. So the art of how to package yourself so others can buy you. Um, I mean, obviously what you've done around the sexy boss brand. Yeah. Obviously what you've done with your other clients and your other clients' products and services. Talk to us a little bit more about that. So, um, you know, the listeners here, they're thinking, well, you know, I'm not quite sure how to package me and get myself out to that distribution. Maybe they've nailed that distribution point, but they just don't know how to pull, pull themselves together. Talk to us a little bit about that and some of the experiences. And, so uh, my, super, my superpower is messaging, right? It's, it's, it's what I do best with clients. It's my, like a little elixir. And when I work with private clients, I don't take on many more anymore. But when I do, do work with private clients where I literally do a done for you program, I literally launch everything. What I'm not launching, I just happened recently, I had a client go, well, I just thought I was launching a podcast. My baby, you didn't launch a podcast. You launched a brand. I just launched you a million dollar brand. Okay. So, and uh, he was like, I, you did. And I'm like, yeah, that's your, that's your book. That's your, this, your, that. I go, now what you do with it, that's up to you. But I just created a brand for you. And he was kind of like taken back and like, oh my God, you're right. I never saw that. Because you've got branding is everything. And what my elixir is specifically in branding is not corporate branding. When you have a human 
branding, a personal branding, that's like my elixir. I have turned so many duds <laughs> turns into like stars, you know, because it's all about the position and the conversation around that. Okay. Yeah. So um, what, you know, there's no really, it's a process. It's a download. It's a superpower. They have, people have to relate to you. This particular person was a doctor as an MD. He's a researcher stem cell guy. So like hard, you know, he's very MD ish. <laughs> Let's just say that. Can you say boring? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's adorable, but like at the same time, I'm like, Oh, this is like, he's like, I want to be like Dr. Oz. I'm like, Oh, we got a, we got a long road. So, um, but I did, I, I created it. We, it, it, he looks amazing. I tell him what to wear and the new pictures and how to smile and what to do. And it like pull that authentic piece out of him. And it's now his new brand. He came to me literally like his doctor in Edwards. I can't even pronounce it to be totally honest. <laughs> And now he's highway to health, living ageless, Dr. E M D. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Right, that is right. I was like, I just created you a Dr. Oz brand, a million dollar brand. It's up to you if you want to like nurture it. Because once you birth it like a child, you don't just like walk away from the the, the baby, right? Like, see you later. You have to nurture it and love it. And would you say, Heather, that that's something that you can do straight out of the gate, or do you need to refine it two or three times first? I took, I mean, that's one of the challenges I have with clients. They, it's, first of all, you know, he's linear. He's a linear guy. So I, I love him for that. But he was like, you know, the process was like, was it very linear? I'm like, creation ain't, ain't linear, sweetheart. You know, creating a baby and having a baby is not linear. It's a messy process. So because there's, there's no straight line, it's like, yeah. hopefully we'll be done in two weeks, maybe three. For him, it took like five weeks because yeah. we were like, I was like, where's the thing? I had to like dig through. It takes something. It's a creation process. It's like, it's like sex. It's not always pretty. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> not, it's like birthing. It's not pretty, but it's the process. You've got to, you've got to allow the process to happen. And, and finding someone like myself is unique. A lot of people aren't very good at that. I guess I'm more of a creation process. I spend time with yeah. the client. I kind of get the energy of them. And so there isn't like a linear, is it taught? I don't even know how to teach it. I just, I'm very it's good just, at you it. You just do it. You just do it. It's a natural yeah, thing. Yeah. And I've been doing it now for 20 years, but I didn't know it was my superpower. I just thought everyone was good at this. I, you know, so I was like, what do you mean? Why are you not, can you not see this is who he is? And he's like, but like, no, <laughs> but um, it, it's just my superpower. It's my genius side of me that I, and I do believe it's like a download genius. I just believe that. And a lot of women would think crazy, but like I am gen genius on that side. And that's because I'm just very good at that, but the branding's everything. And so you have to get to a point where people can consume you. Yeah. Looking at him now, like if you, I did a before and after of like his LinkedIn profile and who he is now, he's consumable, meaning people want to come towards him now. Like, oh, yeah. take a step forward. Yeah. Like, oh, Dr. EMD, like he really gets me. And he's like in a black t shirt. He's not in a, the white coat. He's got open. He's got a big smile. You know, it's very approachable. It's welcoming. Yeah, well, really. I mean, and like highway to help. I want that. I want to live ageless. You know? So you've got to be willing to have a brand that people like come towards like, yeah. Oh, number one uh, copywriting tool is curiosity that I use. Absolutely. It's, it's like on email subject lines, isn't it? It's, I mean, yeah. you know, we, we've, we've seen the Ryan Dice stuff. I know we share some sort of yep. interesting common He's interest down the there. street. He lives like what, but about a mile and a half, two miles is digital marketer. So I remember looking at a Ryan Dice email years ago. And, and he just said, did you miss this? And it was like, in the autoresponder, Mike, comma, did you miss this? So I'm like, what? Did I miss what? You know, click, 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 the open rate, bang, straight in there. And, you know, Fear of uh, missing out, baby. It's a good one. Fear <laughs> of missing out. It's a yeah, good one. Absolutely. So uh, if you want to get your emails open, just try, did you miss this? Uh, oh, you've got to be relative. You know, you can't, you can't be, you know, it's got to be relative to the content. But, uh, but that was one that always stood out to me that, you know, and, and we still use it today. And, and more reminder emails that we deliver something out and then they don't open it and we deliver it two or three days later. Did you miss this? And, and the, you know, the open rate stuff from that alone. So the curiosity part is awesome and I, and I buy into that all the way. So thanks for sharing on that. That's that sort of package yeah. there. Um, so I suppose it, as we're getting further down this then, and we've yeah. identified what we've done, I suppose, what is the secret to stop selling yourself and then being able to influence others? Um, you know, to buy? Yeah, let me explain the difference between expertise and influence, right? Yeah. So expertise, it used to be being an expert, being an expert, being an expert. And there was like be authority, you know, all these words, right? Here's my distinction, the difference. So expertise is like, I'm an expert at, you know, car mechanic or something, yeah. or like I'm an expert at Facebook ads or something, which yeah. is cool. That's fine. But it's, it's, a, it's a box piece. Influence is very different. Let me give you a really good example that everyone knows, Oprah. So yeah. Oprah does not, and she's never positioned herself as an expert of anything. No. 
No. If you think, think about it. No, she has never said, I'm an expert at media. Now, we all know she is, obviously, but she doesn't position herself that way. Her positioning all through the 25 years of the Oprah show was, hey, man, I'm just, I'm just a girl trying to learn. I'm a girl learning and I'm bringing you the best of the best of Ikar Tolle and Maureen Williamson and the, you know, and I'm interviewing amazing actors and asking them stories. And I want to learn, like she came across as I'm a, so she became an influencer because what she was doing, she was representing who we are and yeah. asking People questions. Could connect. We could connect with like, Oh girl, I was thinking the same thing, you know? So she became, a, she's an, first of all, she's an influencer period, yeah. but she's become such a huge influencer that if you really think about it, now she's doing weight loss and what now she's influencing women to lose weight. But if you really understand the concept of influence, what that means, it doesn't mean you're an expert. No, absolutely not. Really it's look great, at that. It's a great you know, tr- let's look at one that like him or not very polarizing Trump. All right. Yeah. Trump like him or not run into that politics, but it is very, he's an influence. Yeah. Like him or not. He, I mean, the man, if you're, if you're not, if you're in the United States, he drives the media every day yep. and they try so hard not to let him do that. <laughs> but they've, a lot of them are just like given in, you know what I mean? That's fine. Just what is, what's look at his Twitter. What is he saying? You know, because they realize that people, even though the, the media, CNN, Fox News, whatever, they sometimes, whatever, internally they get annoyed. Like, oh, we shouldn't let them, we should let him drive the narrative as they say. You know why they keep doing it? It's because the rest of America and the world want to know what he's doing. Absolutely. And that's an influence. It's the, in, he has this massive influence right now around the entire world. I would say Trump is bigger than Oprah by 5,000. Yeah. I mean, the thing you his- mentioned earlier about the distribution networks, forget the president of the United States sort of gig that he's, 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 he's achieved. I watched a documentary on Netflix about uh, Trump's early real estate businesses where his dad started yeah. the real estate business, but out in Jersey or Brooklyn or something. But he was actually the person who brought the Trump name to the Manhattan Highlands. And Correct. some of the audacious moves that he made. And, uh, and you know, I mean, funny enough, he had a female uh, construction manager. That's right. In the That's early right. 10s. And that was unheard of. But, you know, it was it, even back then, you know, early 70s or maybe mid 70s, uh, uh, apologies for the experts who and the purists who will call me on that. But just 70s, uh, it, yeah. Yeah, but so, and, and how he brought the Trump name to Manhattan, which was the step up, and how he drove that community, how he drove the Manhattan influences, and he how he got him. influenced Manhattan big time. Yeah, absolutely, the skyline. People have to give up like or not thing going on with him and look at the influence that man has made. Yeah, it has been traumatic and, and, and not traumatic and negative. It's been huge magnitude, isn't it? it, it and the I mean, only reason, honestly, if he had never run for president, people he'd be, you know, everyone would love him. Yeah, right. It'd be like love. Oh, he did all these amazing things. So just because he's president, there's a lot of negativity right now, yeah. but it's polarizing. But he has done what he did is he realized that the more influential he could become in Manhattan, the better his real estate deals would become. Yeah. And, and, and more valuable, you know, and, and that's my, valuable. that's my elixir to people. That's why I tell people, the more you allow yourself and tap into the influence of yourself and help influence people in the world and helping people, he helped people, guys. Absolutely. He did. You, you look at his track record. There's a ton of people he helped, and he really helped women. Believe it or not, I know people. He did. Look at his track record. This is facts. Okay, <laughs> so, but I want you to get. He really did. And so, even with Oprah, I mean, she made a huge, profound difference in the media business. And she's an African American. Yeah. She made a huge impact. She influenced. But let's be honest. I mean, we're, honestly, Trump is, you know, obviously an expert in, in real estate. Let's be straight. However, he positions himself differently. Yeah, he does. He doesn't position himself like, I'm a real estate. Because in the, the day, guys, real estate experts suck. They're very annoying. <laughs> and they're boring. Have you ever talked to her? Like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, my, I don't want to talk to you. But an influencer helps shape industries. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm not going to be an expert. I'm not going to be a, a, a Trump or Oprah. Okay, let's go back. You can be a influencer in your industry, in your area. Like for myself, I'm tapping in right now into Austin. I'm really tapping into a local businesses in Austin. I really want to become an influencer in Austin where I help entrepreneurs thrive in Austin. And I really want to support them. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to start, I'm I'm creating an entire new podcast called Austin Like a Boss. Brilliant. My whole thing is going to be lifting up 
right? Lifting up, being Oprah in Austin, a very yeah. segmented space. Yeah, and, and you're channeling that down, you're concentrating yeah. it down, you're getting that message in there and, and yeah. people are going to connect and things like that. So now that's awesome. And, you know, whether it's politics, it's TV stars, you don't have to be at that level. Um, you know, look what Heather Hand's doing on her own podcast and, and in that local, well, I'm saying local in the, in, the, in the metro area of sort of Austin and Texas area, what I'm doing with the open mic. Um, and the reason why I asked you about it, just to tap into your expertise, Heather Ann, is that when we first did our podcast, we called it Cast Hub because it was like cast and then hub for the successor. And then we, we, we played about with that and then it didn't really work. And then as I was bringing my own brand up and it's like the open mic, Mike Misley, and then it just connected. It was just something we threw around in the office. Oh, let's have a look. Let's create a brand around that. Now we have his own brand, the open mic. We've got his own T-shirts. We've got this. We've got that. We've got the other. Uh, you know, we're not quite Oprah or Donald Trump as yet. And hopefully one but day. You but are, you're an influencer in your space. It, correct. And, you know, what we do is yes. we serve venture-backed high-growth SMEs uh, who are wanting to either raise venture capital or yes. grow crazy. You got to come to work with a successor, but Mike, that's our track record. That's what we do. And, you know, um, you know, we, we, that, you know, we get influence on like yourself who can add to that for different uh, examples. It's not just all about us. We want to share that out there. We're a big believer of altruism out there and, and really sort of share that expertise and that knowledge. But, you know, people do rely on it. A couple of clients recently, and I'm sure you get the same, Heather Ann, that is where they said, Mike, you know, we, we trust your guidance. You know, you've been there. You've done it. We, yeah. we, you've walked yeah. you. We trust what you say. I don't really have a view on it. If you say it's good, we'll go with it. And it's like, whoa. And suddenly you get that aura of responsibility. And then, you know, so it's, you've got to use that carefully. And I think that if you are building your influencer uh, network, if you want to go back and check um, a podcast out I did earlier last year in 2018 with Henry Kaminsky Jr. You want to listen to his journey, how he went out about it all wrong. He went out and be bullish and self and It was all about Henry. Um, and he, he grew up and then he crashed and burned and he got murdered on, not literally, but uh, slated on social media. And then he came back humble and, and he, and he, and he and he's super, super, super successful. So go and check that out on, on the podcast if you want to sort of hear about that. But, you know, don't overstep the mark. If you are an influencer, you do have responsibilities. Um, and people, and it wasn't Heather, for, Heather and until I, the, the, and, it, and it came across about a three or four month period where a number of clients kept saying the same thing, totally disconnected. None of the clients knew each other. It's not as if we'd done a conference together and they talked. And this, you know, they were all saying the same thing. Mike, I trust what you say. I believe in what you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm putting my business in your hands. And suddenly that wave of responsibility came over the top and it's like, whoa, how do I deal with this? You know, and it's like, okay, you know, let's just mm -hmm. keep drilling down, doing the basics, concentrating on the, you know, the goal, core goals and, and let's get the results. Uh, but it is, it, 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 it can be unnerving sometimes when you, when you cross that line um, and, and yeah. people see you that way. So if you put yourself out there, all I'm saying is be prepared to, to, to deliver the goods and, and be authentic, like we said at the beginning of the show. Yeah, you've so, got to be able to deliver the, the goods as an influencer for sure. That, Absolutely. So as we start to wrap up, Heather, here, uh, pricing yourself, the biggest mistakes in wrong pricing and how to avoid them. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I'm keen to understand your view on those. Yeah. So I'll go back to the example of the, um, the weight loss thing that I did. In the marketplace, everyone was trying to sell these like high end, you know, thousand to two thousand dollar sessions. Yeah. And the reason why I went opposite of that it wasn't about going to a lower market. It was a disbelief conversation. So people would like, what do you mean I can lay down in 30 minutes and actually lose two or three inches or whatever? There was a disbelief in their head. So how do you overcome that? One way is the first, first wave of market in that world, the Zoronas, they said, well, it's so amazing that we got to charge two grand. Like, I know you can't believe it. So it's, you know, that was the first wave and that's fine for the first rollout, which was, you know, a couple of years ago. And so the high end women who like, they will drop two grand for two or yep. three inches, but then you have not mainstream, but look at the next devil down where people are like, if I believe it, two grand, forget it. Yeah. You know, they're just like, I'm not, I'm not willing to try for two grand because yeah. I, my beliefs risky. off. So the pricing you have to allow for the disbelief so the disbelief in that one is I said, let's drop it down to like, it literally was three sessions for 297. Now the value was two grand and we dropped it to 297. We had an inundation. Yeah. And then what happened is when they got the result, cause it was like a, you lay on, we, we measure you, you lay on and then you got, so you saw it, you know what I mean? Like there was a piece like, oh, I see this. Then the disbelief, disbelief was gone. Yeah. And then they're like, wow, 
this is great. I want more or what else you got, you know, because they, they're like, well, I'll throw $300 at something that like, if it doesn't work, I won't be like exactly pissed about it. You know, yeah. that they're like, ah. yeah, it's, it's like a facial. It's like two facials. It's like, well, okay. You know what I mean? So women drop money all the time on looking good. So that's why I did that. Pricing is important. You have to be willing to allow yourself to have the value and the stacking piece and then drop the price of your value. If something is $15,000 in the information marketing space, you have to be willing to drop that to $3,000 or $5,000. Yeah. The pricing is really important yeah. for the marketplace. And some people are like, it's worth all this. I'm like, if the market doesn't tell you it's worth that, or if you don't show the market it's worth yeah. that, you're never going to do it. You know, that's why webinars are so big and podcasts are big because we can sit there for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and basically prove our value. Yep. But when you're dealing with an ad, like we were on a Groupon or living social, which is yeah, just it's like, not there. it's yep. like, we need to have that money so that when we get in there, then we upsold them in that particular case at that time, we upsold them to a $3,000 package once yeah. they were which in. Which have proven the concept. And yeah. Cause we like, we just, for three hundred dollars, we just you just lost like two inches for three. You did nothing. You were on your phone, you know. And then they're like, "What else you got?" So now their disbelief is like, "Wow, there's more here." And then we sold them into like a twenty five hundred dollars or twenty five hundred dollar package. Yeah. We sold them supplements and more of a long term implementation. Like a subscription model, which is you know, it just keeps paying, doesn't it? it just right, keeps... right. But you have to crop the disbelief of the, uh, that's a really key piece. A lot of times, like, oh, these softwares, this software, you know, could be f worth five million dollars or five hundred dollars a month, but people don't see the value. It's not worth it. That's why influencers are so important right now. So brands are connected with influencers because they can't connect direct. So they're going through influencers because people are watching influencers. And if the influencer is like, you got to buy this cup. It's amazing. I love this cup. It's so awesome. I love it. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden they're like, I'll buy the cup because she likes it. Absolutely. The disbelief is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also that fear of, uh, like you said, I think you said earlier, they'll drop the 297 because it's, right. you know, it, it, if it didn't work, then they're not that embarrassed. They didn't waste it. But if they have to explain to the husband or the wife that they've blown two grand and it didn't work, then, you know, it, it's such a big difference, isn't it? That's a it's great a big point. difference. The pricing is really, really, really critical. And the people, the, here's a challenge I'll tell you real quick. As an artist, as a, so creators are artists, right? Pod, you're a podcast, podcast, you're an artist, you're a creator, you're, that's how I, I, entrepreneurs are creators. Okay. We're yep. inventors. So um, the challenge with us is that it's our work. And so if, our, if it's coming through as our work, we all want to like, it's worth millions. <laughs> right it's a big mistake <laughs> it's a big mistake right because people don't understand the value a good example is if you um i was mentored by many copywriters but uh, you know dan kennedy said a long time ago how long he said it's, it takes longer for me to create a 10 minute presentation than it does an hour presentation why yep. because you it takes all this energy to like it takes longer to create a classified ad than it does a full ad. Why? Yeah. Because it's it's just harder to do that. You it's know, all but the killer in there in that short, short, small space. It's all the killer. Yeah. There, really. But it's like that old. Have you heard? I'm sure you've heard the story of of, of the consultant and the the machine owner or the the manufacturer owner. It's a cons there's something wrong with the machines. The consultant comes in. He brings yeah. a hammer. He's looking around, looking around. He hits something, boom, he hits it's fixed and he gives the guy a $10,000 bill. And he goes, you were only here for 10 minutes. He goes, well, let me itemize it for you, right? <laughs> if also visit zero, I'll give you that to you for free. Knowing where to hammer, that's $10,000. You know, it took me 20 years to figure out where to actually where do Where to hit it, yeah. So it's, it's like, it's not what the value I charge, it's the value I bring to the hour, not what I charge. It's me. the 20 years of direct response copywriting that I bring to the table. Absolutely, it gets you that email. Only, that yeah, lesson. it might only take me an hour to write your copy but that's 20 years, like a surgeon. A surgeon might only take five minutes to pull the bullet out of someone's heart or out of their rib, it might take him five minutes, but it took him 20 years to figure to out how to, do, how to do it and keep you right, alive. To, to be in the, be in that room, you know? So that is the problem with value. You've got to be able to understand that yeah. and that's worth a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Heather, Ann, I can't thank you enough. Um, I seriously appreciate the time. I know this is a busy yeah. period for you. But thanks for adding so much value. Um, it, it's been absolutely awesome to hear your story all the way through. Mm -hmm. The examples and, you know, that can do attitude, that positivity, the highs, the lows, the, the knowledge that you've given around, the, the, you know, the positioning and, and, and the packaging is just so music to my ears. You know, because I think so many people in today's fast-paced world just skim over that type of stuff and go to market and wonder why it doesn't happen. And 
just doing that dirt work is, is, is awesome. Thank if you. If you don't mind for just a second, I'd like to, you know, just kind of do a shout out to the ladies. <laughs> yeah. And it's challenging to be a female entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. It really is. Um, and for, it just is, you know, whatever reason, I'm not going to go into that. It doesn't matter. But I want to acknowledge the female entrepreneurs, the women who are just getting started or who want to get started or who are like, they're in the, they're in the rowboat and it feels challenging. Yep. It's hard. And part of the reason it's hard, um, not from a society standpoint, yep. but we as, we as women have been taught for thousands of years to ask permission before we move forward. Yeah. And men aren't taught that as much. <laughs> And so I kind of want to do a shout out to the ladies to say, I hear you and being, and when you find your voice, your tribe will follow. When you find your voice, your opportunities come towards you. And I just encourage each of every man and woman, but really I'm speaking to the ladies because it's more challenging to really find their voice through their work and finding their voice through their creation and not being attached to it. You know, when you get who you are is a thought leader or a global leader or an influencer or an entrepreneur, you really get that it's not about you. It's about understanding the creation process. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going a little soapbox. I just really want to shout out to them. And it's like, it's okay what you're going through. You know, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot you're dealing with your, the mental, the emotional. And then, you know, it's, it's counterintuitive for a woman to build a business. Yeah. So, and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be because, you know, at the end of the day, there's some awesome entrepreneurs, oh, um, they're awesome. you know, and I think they're awesome words, Heather. And thank you for sort of just putting that in and you're more than welcome. Um, if you are a female listener and that resonates with you, go and check out Heather on Avonwood.com. Yeah. Uh, we'll put the links below in the show anyway, so and we'll put all that out there, but uh, Heather on Avonwood.com. You can also check out Heather, what Heather Ann's doing on Instagram at uh, Heather Havenwood as well. So uh, please do that and uh, say hello and connect with her on LinkedIn as well, which is Heather Havenwood.com forward slash LinkedIn. There'll be a redirect that drops straight onto um, Heather Ann's page and I'm sure we'll be delighted to hear from you and you'll be delighted to help. Um, so thanks very much in Indeed, uh, the value that you've given has been awesome. What I try and do, Heather, I mean, we, we've covered so much, and um, some, a, lot of the, a lot of the listeners actually say, hey, wouldn't it be great if you could do a recap for us at the end of the show and pick out sort of two or three sort of pro tips? So you know, direct response marketing, packaging oneself, becoming that influencer, giving the value to the world, Heather Ann. How, how would you summarize that if we could even in, 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 in three short statements? Okay, so really the three short statements is one, you know, as far as tactical things, your message, your market, your media is the key piece. And each one of those is kind of their own pro tip. So what's your message, to, right? What really is your message in the world? What's your key? What's your that? Who is really your market you're talking to? You've got to pick one. I always have the Homer effect where you, uh, Homer Simpson effect, you literally <laughs> Go online, find that avatar, print him or her out and put it onto your computer. And like, that's my avatar. It's got to yeah. be like that specific. Okay. And then the next piece of that is your media yeah. and media. It means, uh, so, you know, the yellow pages is a media, right? <laughs> um, billboard ads is a mil media, um, you know, Facebook ads is a media. Yeah. So podcasting is a media, a media. giving you the point, right? So those are all just medias. And so you've got to make sure that your message is tapping into your market and then finding that through the right media. And right. that's right there. I mean, it's, it's basic, but it's critical. And it's, it's super valuable, isn't it? Because, you know, it's, uh, I mean, in the football uh, business or the baseball business yeah. or whatever, if you, you know, here in the, here in the UK, we're big Everton fans uh, and our arch rivals are Liverpool. So if you're trying to market Liverpool merchandise to me as an Evertonian, that's a no-no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, not only just delete your email, I'm going to mark you as spam, you know what I mean? And, and whether that's email marketing or anything else, so it's just about getting the right, understanding that avatar, uh, I, that audience. And, and Real quickly, if you don't mind, so I just watched the whole documentary about the UK leaving um, Brexit. <laughs> Brexit. Oh, yeah. It was wow. fascinating because if you, I'm a marketer, so I watched that from a marketing perspective and he nailed it. Take back control. Yeah. That yeah. was the narrative that hit it. America, make America great again. Yeah, the make the America great again, yeah. 
he's talking to middle America. He knew exactly who he's talking to. He knew the, he knew the message that the market wanted to hear. And yeah. then he has the media. And then who, that guy who did that, it looks like he got a lot of backlash. So, so sorry, guys. But he's brilliant because he knew the market and Correct. the message and the right media. So Absolutely. like them or not, you know, there's all politics there, but I want you to get how brilliant both markets and messages are to the right market. And, you know, at the end of the day, Trump just will take credit because easier. It might be a little too toughy with the UK, but you know, he's make America great again. He knew his markets, that middle America, the one that doesn't get a lot of light. Yep. They don't get a lot of like the middle America. They don't have a show really, you know, so I felt left out before they, they've been left out. They, they call it the flyover country. Yeah. So and think, it's that inclusion, isn't it? You come into my pen and we'll do this together. Type of thing. So, but see how powerful the message to the market and the right media yeah, is. Nothing Those two place. case studies, those are 21st century case studies. Yeah. Never goes truly, out of fashion. Are truly going to go down in history as the most brilliant marketing campaigns, I think, ever. Yeah, absolutely. Both of them. The Brexit one, too, like it or not, politically, right? But, <laughs> like, literally, he really nailed it. If you watch that documentary, how he – it was all the word about the word back. Take yeah. back control. There's a, there's a lot of um... – I know. A lot of people don't like it. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> But, I mean, it's – it's a, I have to look at it from a market perspective. I have nothing known about politics in the UK about Brexit, so please forgive me. But I really do. He's brilliant. The guy who did he's brilliant. He's no, brilliant. I appreciate that. Thanks ever so much, Heather Ann. It's been an absolute powerhouse of a podcast. Thank you very much indeed. If you want to check out uh, more about Heather, uh, Heather, head over to heatherannavenwood.com. We'll put the links below. Check her out on Instagram at uh, Heather Havenwood. Um, thanks ever so much for being on the show, Heather Ann. It's been absolutely awesome. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much for having me. So we appreciate you tuning in as listening as always. Hope you got some value out of that. You know, check out uh, Heather online. And as always, to get in the game, go do the hustle, go make it happen. And we'll see you on the next Open Mic Show. Thank you. You have been listening to The Open Mic, brought to you by The Success Hub. To find out more and to get the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit blog.thesuccesshub.io and view the podcast section. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you in our next episode. This podcast and associated materials is published under copyright to The Success Hub. All rights reserved. No reproduction of this material is permitted.